Welcome to Proven Improbable. I'm your host, Maurice Jackson. Joining us today is the mercenary geologist, Mickey Fulp. We're live at the New Orleans Investment Conference. Mickey, pleasure to have you on the show today. Thank you, sir. Mickey, one of the concerns that I think uh, speculators have in the natural resource space is this concept of peak gold. What can you share with us? Well, there's this idea now of peak gold, and it's really morphed out of the concept of peak oil, which was promulgated by a famous geologist, geophysicist in the 1950s, late 1950s, on this idea that U.S. oil production would peak in 1970 and never reach that level again. Well, his premise was based on the natural depletion of giant oil fields discovered in the United States, and he was right. But people have sort of bastardized that con concept, not only in oil, but now into gold. And they, they took the tack that the world was running out of oil and we had reached peak production and we would never achieve this sort of oil production in the U.S., for example, ever again. Well, lo and behold, it took 47 years for us to recover, but now we're producing more oil than we ever have. And, and so this idea that the world is going to run out of a natural resource or re, reach peak production is fraught with difficulty. We, we produce more oil in the world right now than we ever have, and next year we'll produce even more because demand continues to rise at about 1.5% a year. So in the oil business, we're now the world's using 100 million barrels of oil a day. Five years ago, we are using about 92, 93 million barrels a day. And where does that production come? Well, it's come from, from peak uh, or from shale oil, and technology catches up. So if the demand is there, my opinion, that the supply will be found. 70% uh, of the oil in the world is still left in the ground. So I've taken that concept and, and applied it to the gold business. And what do we see as far as that peak gold? What do you see? Well, the world, uh, starting in 1900, the world produced 393 tons of gold. So I'm doing the math in my head. That would be... Uh, something on the order of 10 million ounces a year, more or less, 10 to 12 million ounces a year. Now we produce 3,150 tons per gold in 2017, an all-time high. That's 98 million ounces per year. So more than an eight times increase. And that's been driven in cycles of exploration. So things like economics, world economics, wars, prices of gold, uh, all affect that production. But the real key to increases in production, at least since uh, gold was floated by Nixon in 1971, is the exploration cycle. Generally what we've seen over the years is Gold uh, increasing, but kind of in a two steps forward, one step back. But a somewhat jagged line, but these long runs of increased production. And then we'll have a war, we'll have a depression, and gold production uh, with a war will go down, with a depression it goes up. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we keep going and going and going. So for the last, since 2008, we've been on, <clears throat> pardon me, a very steep uh, curve of increasing gold production. So people like Ian Telfer, the CEO of Gold Corp, comes out in the early part of the year and said, all the good gold deposits have been found. There's no giant deposits that are going to be found anymore. And, <clears throat> and the world's going to produce, never produce as much gold. Well, I think he's talking his own book. And if you look at Gold Corp's production over the last three years, it's going down. It's gone down 25% from 2015 to 2017. You look at the other major miners, such as Barrick, is down 40% off its peak in around 2005. Newmont's off about the same amount off its peak production in 2006. So I would take the attack that the major gold miners have reached peak 
peak production, peak gold, but that's been filled. Where's all this additional production coming from? It's coming from the new company, the new mid-tiers that have been built since the, the year 2000, 2005. Uh, a whole, you know, there's about nine mid-tiers now, and then it's also been filled by small miners that, <coughs> pardon me, increasingly a number of small miners in all parts of the world. Uh, the majors are down something like uh, all all told uh, 50 percent of their gold production since uh, mid 2000s. Mean, meanwhile, production is up about the same amount. It's, it's up 40 or 37 percent since 2008. It's filled by new companies. So would you say then that the majors have a, a flawed business plan? Absolutely. And in what regard? Uh, they, they don't take, uh, number one, they, the biggest flaw in the industry amongst the majors, and it applies to, to other companies too, they're focused on growth. And mining is not a growth industry. Mining is a value industry. So when prices were high, they lost uh, view of what they should be doing is producing high margin ounces. It's about the margin, the cost of production versus the amount you sell and that's your profitability. So they've had this grow, 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 so what I would call a New York style of capitalism. It does not work in the mining industry and it certainly has not worked for the major coal mining companies. So what are you sharing with your subscribers? Are you more focused on juniors or mid-tiers? Always juniors. I don't want to be. I don't want to own miners. To tell you the truth, I focus on exploration companies. I wrote a piece a couple of months ago. Is why I don't want to own any miners. Uh, now I do owe a few miners, but they've become miners from exploration companies that I own, or they've been taken out by miners exploration. But the real value in this business is uh, in the juniors. Uh, and my particular sweet spot would be the advanced explorers because I think that's where you have uh, the lowest risks for the uh, potential highest reward. Now, Mickey, someone listening to our interview here today, they want to get more information regarding your work. Please share the contact details. Uh, MercenaryGeologist.com. I run a free subscription service, as you well know, Maurice. And uh, to get my stock picks, you need to be a free email subscriber. We have a very active Twitter feed, at MercenaryGeo, 55,546 Twitter followers as of today. And we're quite active in that venue. And also, if we visit our website, which is provenandprobable.com, Mickey Fope, the mercenary geologist, thank you for joining us today on Proven and Probable. Thank you, Maurice. All the best, sir. Same to you, sir. Thank you for joining us today on Proven and Probable. Remember to like and subscribe for more conversations with the most respected names in the natural resource space. Check out our website at www.provenandprobable.com. The information presented on Proven and Probable is provided for educational and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice, or any other advice. You should not make any financial, investment, or trading decision based on any of the information presented without first undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or competent financial advisor.